politics is a very interesting game. And politics is also a very dirty game. The Deputy President Dr. William Samai Ruto has spent almost 80% of his time, resources and everything in the larger Mount Kenya region. As a matter of fact, for the last four years, the Deputy President has been to almost each and every corner of the larger Mount Kenya region. President Rumuge Kenyatta was just watching him. And a few weeks ago, Raila Molo Dinga entered into Mount Kenya politics. Uhuru Kenyatta is also pulling the strings from behind. And William Ruto is finding it very rough in the larger Mount Kenya politics. And you can clearly tell that his strategy in the past is not working for him. So the deputy president was in uh, Meru and clearly he has changed his strategy. His strategy now is very simple. Number one, he's using targeted propaganda. I'll probably explain in a different video. The deputy president is also trying so hard to incite the locals against Raila Molodinga. That's why it's been like CC 4 million, what were by, I mean, CC 4 million people. Uhuru could not get someone from amongst us. He's basically trying to incite them. He's also reduced his attacks on the president. That's something which is coming out from his tour in Nyeri. And he's also now focusing on the governors and any other leader who is supporting Raila Amolodinga. But the deputy president is making grave political mistakes based on his trip in Meru. So in this video today, I want to highlight for you the five mistakes which the deputy president has committed while in Meru. And those mistakes are likely to cost him the presidency. But before we do that, if you are watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. Now let us get back to business. William Samoy Ruto is a shrewd politician. But William Ruto suffers from one main problem. William Ruto is not patient enough. Let me read for you just a few comments. A few comments. One from Pauline Yoroge. We all know who Pauline Yoroge is. Her observation on William Ruto's trip to Meru. He, Pauline is saying, Ruto is visibly angry man. The way he's telling off and insulting Mount Kenya leaders who are supporting Raila is a matter of concern. He's clearly telling the region that it has no right to support anyone else but him. That he is fully entitled to their support to, at zero option. The concern is, if he is this angry at governors and other leaders who are supporting Raila, how angry will he be with ordinary Mugikuyu who will decide to vote for Raila Morodinga? That's a serious concern by Pauline Joroge. And there's another comment she made. This must have been yesterday. Why would Ruto insult Kiraitu Murungi just because the latter is supporting Raila? Aren't we in a democracy? in a democratic country where we enjoy freedom of association and the right to support whoever we want without any question. And that's, and what's with Ruto and Makasiriko lately? What's with the entitlement? So basically, just like I said, the deputy president is cornered and the frustrations are getting over him. So unless his team will be able to sit him down, the deputy president is likely to lose it. I'm also just trying to look for another comment by another lady here who I know was working for Rigadi Gashagwa before. I don't know whether she's still working for Rigadi Gashagwa. She's called Martha J.M. Miano. Martha is saying he declares himself the Mount Kenya kingpin and grown-up men cheer him up. Are these the people you want us to get married to? <laughs> Nita Kurogu, are you rogued? Yani, this is what she said also. Yani Mutu Anatoka, all the way from Sugoi, comes to Mount, Mount Kenya region to insult governors and the president, and you cheer him up. Where did it get to this? 
Now, from those comments, and there are several others which I've managed to read, the deputy president is committing a mistake in the larger Mount Kenya region, especially after his mayor tour without knowing. If you're watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. Now, what are some of these mistakes which the deputy president is committing based on his trip from Meru? In my view, these are the mistakes. Number one, mistake number one is attacking President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. President Uhuru Kenyatta is going home. And the fact that the president is going home, it means he will lose nothing. And if there's one thing which should worry the deputy president, is President Uru Kenyatta's silence. What is President Uru Kenyatta's up to? I've always opined here that as much as President Uru Kenyatta might not be popular in the larger Mount Kenya region today, those people voted for him out of love. Otherwise, there's nothing which can explain how a community can rally behind one of their own three times and they turn out and they turn out the way they did to president Uru Kenyatta. it was pure love so that love cannot be lost it can only be reduced maybe because of mistake a mistake b and mistake c so the deputy president should in my view desist from attacking president Uru Kenyatta. i'm singing trying so hard not to attack the president but because he's bitter because he's angry is is he can't resist attacking the president. And that's why these comments by Pauline Yoroge and the comments by Jane Miano is something which should worry the deputy president and his team. He should avoid attacking the president. Attacking President Ru Kenyatta will make the Kikuyus who are supporting him start thinking twice without him knowing. The second mistake he's doing is the fact that the deputy president has failed once again, to tame his anger. At some point, if you've been following the deputy president, I want, I want to challenge you, just go back to two weeks, I mean two months ago, and look for his videos, especially whenever he was addressing the church or any other meeting. The deputy president had been trained to manage anger. He was talking slowly, without emotions. And the fact that the, the deputy president is now exhibiting signs of anger, it means people can start talking about the vengeance, that the deputy president is one of the vengeful politicians we have in the country. And that again will, will scare away most people. And that's why Pauline Joroy was asking, if this guy can get angry with the governors who are supporting Raila, what will he do to the Kikuyus who will support, who will actually vote for Raila Molodinga? So those are the questions. Why? Because the DP has actually failed to tame his anger. So that's the second mistake he must avoid. The third mistake he's committing is making Raila Molodinga his agenda. You know, Uhuru Kenyatta, let's begin with Kibaki. Raila Odinga supported Mwai Kibaki. Mwai Kibaki became the president. He has never demanded anything from the Kikuyus based on that. After that, they fell out. So Kibaki rallied the Kikuyus against Raila. When Uhuru came on board, Uhuru Kenyatta's opponent was Raila Molodinga. So he had to apply propaganda. So he applied propaganda, proper propaganda on Raila Molodinga. In the last election, in the last election alone, Uhuru Kenyatta employed the services of Cambridge Analytica. Why? He wanted to instill fear. He wanted the Kikuyus to fear Raila Molodinga. So they succeeded. And after that election, he had the hardship. So which means things are changing. Whatever was being told to the Kikuyus about Raila Molodinga cannot be told today. And if anything, the deputy president and his allies have made Raila Molodinga their subject for four good years. So it means there's nothing new there is absolutely nothing new they can tell the people down there. That's why the only thing they can talk about is that Raila Odinga ni Mganga. Why? Because Raila Odinga was a friend to former president Olesegu Nobacha Sanjo. But Ruto's daughter is now married in the land of Enugu. 
So the moment people like Babu Wino will be unleashed on Ruto, if that's the route, then we will not like it. So I also tend to think that making Raila Molodinga subject in the larger Mount Kenya region again is not going to help Ruto. He just needs to start selling his agenda. He must uh, sell the agenda the way he had started. You see, when he began with, uh, with the dynasties and hustlers, it was selling so well because majority of Kikuyus are very poor. So they were associating. So Raila Odinga was being associated with the dynasty. So when you tell these people that Raila Odinga ni Muganga and you can't pinpoint any other person, I'm a rock, <laughs> then what are you telling people? And these are people who are mature enough to know where the lies is. So making Raila Odinga is not working in his advantage. Number four, and this is very serious, forcing himself as Mount Kenya kingpin. William Ruto might enjoy the support of the larger Mount Kenya region, which is an actually enjoying. But mistake number one is being is assuming that the Mount Kenya region, the fact that they don't have a leader today, will still accepting as their regional leader, as their kingpin. The politics in this country is tribal. So if I were Ruto, I would, I'd, I would uh, do one thing. I would identify someone, let's say Rigadi Gashagwa, and make Rigadi Gashagwa appear as the kingpin of the larger Mount Kenya region. Moses Kure wanted to be that, he stopped him. Kabogo, he stopped him. Uh, Mongi Wairia is not with him as we speak. Then there was the emergence of Mwangi Kiunjuri, he stopped him. So basically, he's now assuming to be the kingpin of the larger Mount Kenya region, something which cannot happen. Each region have their own leaders. The kingpin of the larger Mount Kenya region is President Ru Kenyatta. So when you go and assume that you are the kingpin of the region, while President Ru Kenyatta is still alive and kicking, what are you telling those people? They might laugh at you, they might attend your rallies, but deep down, they might not be very happy. So that's something the DP is committing and is repeating it in Meru. The fifth mistake, I think the DPT president is also opening so many unnecessary wars. You know, when you open a war here, you open another war there, it's unnecessary. Why should the DPT president start wars with Kiraitu Murungi? Who installed Kiraitu Murungi? He didn't want Peter Munya. Right? So he installed Kiraitu Murungi. So today in Meru, he's fighting Peter Munya. He's fighting Kiraitu Murungi. Which next leader is he, go is he going to start fighting? Mpuri Aburi? Or which other one? So opening these unnecessary wars is not going to help William Ruto become the president of the Republic of Kenya. They can only stop him from making the moves. And you see, after attacking Kiraitu Murungi, the comments online, because I can only read online, are not very positive on the deputy president. And lastly, the deputy president now has no clear agenda for the people of the larger Mount Kenya region. His messaging is not coming out clearly. At some point, I did a video on what the deputy president was doing better than Raila Molodinga. One of them was clear messaging. As we speak today, the deputy president doesn't have any a very clear messaging strategy for the people of the larger Mount Kenya region. If you go to a rally, then the message is the same. When the deputy gets off the vehicle, his message is the same. Tuli jenga reli. Tuli tenganaza barabara. You know, you need to vote for us because it's us who understand what is begun with Uru Kenyatta. At the same time, you are saying that Uru Kenyatta has failed. So what are you telling people? At some point, you started deviating from Uru Kenyatta. And serious Kenyans have started believing in the DP. For example, when he came up with that economic team, economic expert team, which was coming up with a, a different model. But now, he's not focusing on even the bottom-up approach. He's not focusing on it. Or if he's focusing on it, it's not coming out clearly. So I tend to think that William Ruto must go back to the drawing board. He must tame his anger. After taming his anger, he must reevaluate the strategy, especially for the larger Mount Kenya region. The truth of the matter is that should William Ruto lose the larger Mount Kenya region vote, he's out of 2022 presidential race. But he still has a secret card. And that secret card is Musalia Mudavadi. 
William Ruto can decide to support Musalia Mudavadi for the presidency. And something tells me that's why Musalia Mudavadi is adamant in supporting Raila Amuru Dinga or One Kenya Alliance Movement. And in my next video, I want to do an analysis on why leaders from the coastal region snubbed Raila Odinga's meeting. They were not there in Kilifi, most of them. He was in Kuala today. Most of them were not there. So what's really happening? Until that time, this is Lee McQueen. Thank you guys and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.